All right, so we're continuing through the organic molecules onto lipids. Um, as you can see, this is an example of a lipid. This is a triglyceride, and if you look at the elements that make up this rather large molecule, uh, you can see some carbon, some hydrogen, and some oxygen, just like in carbohydrates. But recall in carbohydrates, the, the ratios were a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. This isn't the case in lipids. All right, um, You can see that lipids have a vast amount of these carbon-hydrogen bonds, these bonds between carbons and hydrogens. These are very energetic bonds. All right, You can see, just count how many there are. That's why lipids provide us with so much energy. They provide, provide us with uh, much more energy per, per mass than, than do carbohydrates. It's because of all these all these bonds. Every time you break one of these bonds, a great deal of energy is released that your body can utilize. So, um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This is a triglyceride. It's the basic subunit. It's the, the monomer. If you put a bunch of these together, you make the polymer that is a lipid. If we look, look at what a glyceride is, a triglyceride is, a triglyceride is a glycerol molecule. This is a glycerol. It's three carbons in succession, each with hydroxyl groups coming off each one, the OH group. These are fatty acid molecules. This is one fatty acid, this is a second, and this is the third. Um, a triglyceride, once again we're back to these prefixes, tri means that there are three fatty acids, here they are, attached to this glycerol molecule. And how do they attach? They're showing you right here that they attach once again through the, the, the dehydration reaction. We have water that's going to be leaving. One of water is going to be leaving here, here, and here. And we have a fusion between um, this oxygen and this carbon. There it is. A bond will extend between here and there. So we have our triglyceride. And once again, this is the basic subunit. Now, if we go down to types in your chart, there's a good uh, representation of the different types here and also on the next slide. But notice that this fatty acid is straight, as is this one. This one has a bend in it. This obviously sets it itself apart from, from these two. And it's because of this double bond between the two carbons. Double bonds between carbons give flexibility. All right? uh, there's going to be a bend. There's going to be... Um, potential for movement wherever there's a double bond between carbons. And that differentiates different types of lipids. We've got saturated fats and unsaturated fats. So those are two different types. Saturated here, all single bonds between carbons. As you notice, all single bonds between carbons. If we move over, we have an unsaturated fat. We have a double bond here between the carbons. And this is a polyunsaturated fat. We have multiple double bonds between carbons. Why saturated versus unsaturated? Why this terminology? Well, look at this. When you have all single bonds between carbons, recall that carbon can form four bonds. It can form one, two, three, four bonds. And in this case, we can't fit any more hydrogens on this molecule. It's completely saturated. No more hydrogen. So all of these, each of these carbon-hydrogen bonds provide us with a great deal of energy. There's the maximum here. Can't fit any more. When we go and throw a double bond in here, all right, we lose those carbon-hydrogen bonds. There used to be one here. There could potentially could be one there. There could potentially be one there. But there aren't. There isn't one there, I should say. All right, these, uh, this is unsaturated. Okay, it's missing some hydrogens. Its full potential for carbohydrogen, carbon hydrogen bonds is not being realized. It's unsaturated. This is polyunsaturated because it's many, missing many carbon hydrogen bonds. High energy, low flexibility. These single bonds don't provide much flexibility. So saturated fats at room temperature tend to be solid. We're talking about butter, we're talking about lard. Unsaturated fats at room temperature, liquid. I was going to write oil. Yeah, they're liquid at room temp. So, um, relatively speaking, saturated fats tend to be a little bit 
um, worse for you than unsaturated fats. These give more flexibility in their movement through your body. So we've got the types. How about examples? Fats and oils. Just talked about fats, saturated fats like animal fats, fats on a steak, um, blubber, lard, oils like cooking oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil, um, all for insulation and energy storage. Very, very important for us. Remember, all of these carbon-hydrogen bonds are uh, very energetic. We have an unsaturated fat here because of these double bonds, so it's liquid. Down here, once again, saturation, solid at room temp. Waxes, steroids, and phospholipids are other examples of, of lipids. We go through each one. What's the purpose of waxes? What's their function? Well, you can see here that there's a kind of a, a shiny cuticle on each one of these leaves. The, wax, the waxy cuticle um, keeps them from desiccation. It keeps them from drying out, from losing water. Waxes are used in, in the, the construction of, of, of hives by honeybees. Steroids, remember this. They they're typically have a four carbon chain structure, one, two, three, four rings, I should not change, four carbon rings in succession. Um, steroids are chemical messengers. Uh, you can see here um, the example of sexual dimorphism, uh, what testosterone does to the body instead of estrogen. So you can see this male peacock displaying for the female. Phospholipids, another example, what's their function? Well, here's the phospho part in this phosphate head, all right? And these are fatty acid tails. You can see this is a saturated fatty acid. This is an unsaturated fatty acid because of uh, that double bond. The phosphate part is hydrophilic. And remember, fats are hydrophobic. They don't like water. When you put oil in water, it's going to separate out. It's hydrophobic as opposed to carbs, which were highly soluble, which were hydrophilic. The tails are hydrophobic, so from here we're talking about hydrophobic the head the phosphate head is hydrophilic so if you can picture this this is a cell membrane a double membrane of phospholipids this will say is the outside of the cell this is the inside of the cell and you can picture this continuing on all the way around you can see how this could form a very effective barrier. You can see sometimes they have, there are proteins in here, there are steroids that are sometimes uh, embedded in the, in the phospholipid bilayer. But you have all of these hydrophobic tails orientated inward. You have the hydrophilic tails orientated out towards the aqueous solution and in towards the aqueous solution inside the cell. So the function of these is to create uh, a barrier between two environments, in this case the outside of a cell and the inside of a cell. So we went through the elements, the basic unit, the functions we did as we went through types and examples, and that was lipids.